Hello YouTube. In this video we're going to discuss the method for constructing a grouped frequency distribution. That is, we're actually going to construct one, not comment on the nature of it and what they do and how they work, but make one. So let's go ahead and start by taking a look at my data set here. Our data set is our raw data, excuse me, um, raw data because it's been unprepared, not organized. We were, you know, trying to organize it. So um, start with this. How much data do we have? You'll notice that I've arranged this in a rectangular array that seems to be three, three rows. Okay, so we have three rows here, and we have about seven columns. Seven columns. So we say 21 data, but we're missing two data on the last two cells here. So we say about 19 data, and this is a good thing to start with. We say 19 data, or different values for which our variable assumed. And these are heights of plants, say. Okay. So the first thing we're going to start with is this. We're going to say um, we're going to we're going to set up classes. Okay, it means class limits and then class boundaries. Okay, so in terms of setup classes, this is uh, consists of several steps. But but what we're going to do is first of all determine the number of classes that we want. So um, and then their widths. We're going to start by calculating range. Calculating the range of our data set. So now range, the interesting thing about range is this, we have a formula for this, we say range equals capital R is the letter we use to denote this, but we say max, maximum minus the minimum. We just want to know how far does our entire data set span. So in this case we say our min, if you're looking at this data set here, we have a min as the last datum here is 7 inches. We say max, it seems to me is 36 inches. 36. So if we're going to calculate range R, we say 36 minus 7, we get 29. So now, what we really want to do is we want to partition this into so many classes. So let's say we want, for example, like five classes. We want to know how wide should each class be if I want five classes. So here's what we'll do. Uh, we'll take the range, okay, range, and we'll divide it by number of classes. And what this does is it equals the class width. We need to know how wide to make each class. Obviously we're going to start our first class, lower class limit at 7 since that was our minimum, but we need to know the class width. So let's say we want like 5 classes. Now in the last video I so said we want anywhere between 5 and 20. I'm throwing out 5 as an arbitrary value here. So what we'll do is we'll take our 29 total span divided by 5 here, notice well that it says each class should be 5.8 units in width. And of course, we know class limits should have the same place value as the original data. So uh, this number here goes out to the tenths. We're not going to, since our original data was to the nearest whole, our class limits need to be the nearest whole. So the rule of thumb is this. You're going to take your class width that you just found as a decimal, and you round it up to the nearest whole number. Now, in this case, if we wanted five classes, we say, okay, so 29 divided by 5 equals 5.8 and if we round this up to the nearest or not nearest but the next hole we want to make it always the next biggest whole number you say six you'll notice that this is even even and in the last video we mentioned that hey you don't want an even class width you want an odd class width so here's what we'll do instead maybe instead of five classes we know we don't want four classes that'd be kind of inappropriate we'll go six classes so this time we'll say okay well you know what I, I just it's not that I have anything against this it's just that I don't want an even class width. So we'll take our 29 and we'll split it six ways. So 29 divided by 6. We'll go back over here and calculate this. We'll say 29 split six ways. Each class should be approximately, looks like, 4.833. So, you know, 4.83 repeating. Uh, the nice thing here, though, is this. When we round this, not round it, I should say, but when we make this the next biggest whole number, we say 5. So we'll totally keep this. We want a, a class width of 5. So um, this is our class width. So one part in this process of creating a group frequency distribution is to determine the class width and then set up our classes. We're going to go ahead and start by doing that. So we say okay so here's our distribution and we're going to make our columns here. So we say class limits. Now next to our class limits we also want to have our class Boundaries. Remember our class boundaries, they all brush up against one another but don't overlap and they go one extra decimal value, one extra place value. Uh, then we want our tally, a tally of data values, tally, and then our frequency, frequency, call that F. 
I'll draw a little partition here and get this out of the way. And we say cumulative, cumulative frequency, which is something we need to discuss in this video. Okay, so we'll start with class limits. Where should you start your table? Okay, you should start with your minimum. And in this case, our minimum datum uh, was seven. Okay, so we're going to start with seven. And we say now we wanted a class width of five in this case. If we want six classes, each class should be five in width. So here's how we're going to do this. We can say, well, 7 plus 5 is 12, minus 1 is 11. Or we could just say, look, we know from the last video that class width is kind of the distance between this lower class limit and the lower class limit of the very next class. So if we were to take 7 plus 5, we'd get 12. And 12 plus 5, we get 17. And 17 plus 5 is 22. And this plus 5 is 27, and so on and so forth. 32, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 classes. So now to get the other part of our class, we say, well, you know, if this is 7 up to something and the next class starts at 12, then this number here at the end of the first class, our upper class limit of our first class should be 1 less than the lower class limit of the next class. We say 11 is 1 less than 12, or, or 16 is 1 less than 17, which is the lower class limit of the next class. We say 21, uh, 26, this would be 31. And then people always, they kind of get confused sometimes here. But remember, we could also have just added 5 onto all of these. 11 plus 5 would have been 16. 16 plus 5 would have been 21, and so on and so forth. So if we add 5 onto 31 here, uh, we would get 36. So now we have our, our class limits. And actually, everything would be downhill from here. But essentially, we could say, well, 7 to 11, then our class boundaries have to go out one extra decimal place value. And the way we were finding these, we were just... Uh, take a half off of our lower class limit. So 7 would take a half off that. We get 6.5 up to, but not including. Now 11, we'll just tack a half onto it. And the nice thing about boundaries is they, they pick up where they left off. So we say 11.5 here up to 16.5 here, 16.5 here. Remember these, these don't overlap, but they abut one another. So this would be 21.5. So this one picks up 21.5 inches up to 26.5 inches, 26.5 inches, up to 31 and a half inches, and then 31 and a half inches, up to but not including 36 and a half inches. This is lovely, okay? So again, you know, the hardest part of this is coming up with your class limits, you know, determining how many classes you should have so that you have an odd class width and then constructing them, okay? So step two in our whole process here, step two is going to be uh, run a tally count. Tally count. Now, it's, you know, there's no set way to do this, but I will tell you this, like, like six and a half up to eleven and a half. You know, I typically just say this. Okay, so seven. Do we have any sevens? Okay, so I have a seven. So we'll just go ahead and put in a, a tally right here, and then go up to your original data set and cross this off. I say eight, eight. Do we see any eights? No eights. Nines. No nines. Ten. Okay, so there is a ten. So we'll cross it off. So we say ten. We'll make a tally for a ten. And then 11, do we see an 11? No 11. So our frequency in the first class is 2. Uh, how many data were in the second class? So we say starting at 12. It looks like we have a 12 here. So 12, that's 112. Uh, any other 12s? Any other 12s? So I don't see any other 12s. So we'll make a tally for that 12. 13. Don't see any 13s up here. 14. Here's a 14. Any other 14s? No other 14s. So we say tally there. 14. 15. Do we see a 15? 15, 15, 15. No. Uh, if there's a 15 up here in the top right, kind of looks like I crossed it off. But 15, we'll make a tally for that. Uh, and then 16, we say, well, we've got a 16 here and a 16 there, and no more 16s. So we'll make two tally marks for those. We say this class has a frequency of 5. Okay. You'll notice that as we're crossing these off, it becomes easier and easier to look at the data. We say 17. Any 17? No 17s. Definitely see some 18s. So we say 1, 2, Three, four, five eighteens, man. So we say well, one, two, three, four, five eighteens. We say uh, nineteen. Do we see any nineteens? No nineteens. Obviously, you know, it starts to get a little bit easier to see these. We say, well, twenty. We do have twenties. One, two, three, four twenties. We say one, two, oops, three, four twenties. And then any twenty ones. We don't have any twenty ones. So this has a frequency of nine in this class. Now. 22 through 26. Obviously, we see 224s up here because the field's getting pretty slim. So we say 224s, we'll make a tally for each of those. And then that 36 really is the only datum that's left, and that belongs in the last class. So we say this has a frequency of 2, this has a frequency of 1. 
and then this has a frequency of zero, and that's totally fine for us to have. But you know, looking at the distribution now, what conclusion we could draw is basically that most plants are you know between 17 and 21 inches tall. So about these particular plants, you know, or or within 12 to 21 inches tall. Um, but it becomes easier to see this, and also that it's okay to have a class that contains no data values. So now this last column over here, cumulative frequency, we just need to talk about this real quick, but basically it's like saying, uh, how many things have you counted total up until now? So like after the first class, how many things have occurred? How many data values were there? We say two in the first class, so up until now there have been two data values. But when we get to the next class, it's like saying, okay, so now add all of, all of the frequencies up up until now. So we say our original two plus now five more in this class, we say gives us a cumulative frequency of seven. And so our cumulative frequency in the third class, okay, we'd say, well, it'd be now the seven, the original seven we counted, plus nine more, we say 16, okay? And then so on and so forth. Cumulative frequency is basically saying, take everything you've added up until now. So we say 18 plus two. We could basically take our last cumulative frequency plus each new frequency of the, the next class. We say 18 plus zero is 18 still. And then 18 plus this next one is 19. One thing I do want to point out about this is uh, that's our data, number of data values there. Also, if you were to total your entire frequencies, you should come up with the original number of data. If you're not, then that means you've missed some data somewhere. But this is a quick rundown, not quick, but uh, a rundown of how you create a group frequency distribution.